The Could Be Better podcast is sponsored in part by Old Mother Brewing Company, located in the heart of downtown Frederick at 526 North Market Street. Not only does the brewery play host to a ton of Could Be Better shows, but it offers the tastiest beers and cocktails around. Looking for something refreshing and crushable? Try their Hank, which is great for a laid-back summer afternoon. In need of a cozy, heavy stout? Give the Kalista, which took home Best in Show honors at the 2022 Maryland Craft Beer Competition, a try. To learn more about the brewery, including what they have on tap each day, visit www.oldmother.com or on Instagram at, at Old Mother Brewing. Welcome to the Could Be Better podcast. I'm your your friend, <laughs> Chris Barry, and I'm here with my friend Colin McGuire. Hi, Colin. How are you feeling? Hey, everybody. Do you do you guys remember when he used to say my best friend, Colin McGuire? You see how that well, has changed. I I wanted to say friend's friend, it's friend, and then best friend makes it seem like I don't love myself, and I like myself sometimes. That is that is the most bullshit justification for not calling somebody a best friend I've ever heard in my life, but. I will say this, we are speaking to you from the future, which means today I am 40 years old. And Slow clap. I don't feel good about that. <laughs> I I think we should have held a party, but we didn't. I mean, we did. You don't know. No one. Hey, no, actually, we, we, you, you did have a you did have a party and it was a great time and you had a special little gift show up. It was awesome. Wow. What, what, what was the gift? <laughs> uh, well, he's probably in your arms right now. In the oh. future. <laughs> <laughs> I am told uh, that the, the first child comes later than expected. Did that happen with you? Oh, yeah. yeah. He, he was he was a week late. OK, so who knows? I mean, but here's here's the thing. Again, this episode, we're, we're, we're now, I mean, almost a month past all of our our friends and our new listeners from Thatcher and Rye, uh, who yeah, who, are, who, are, right. who are, are checking out our podcast, and I am so grateful for um, everybody that that has tuned in and has liked and followed and uh, said yes, we should bring back that special. But everything there is still delicious. And so, as we're jumping into this, you and else is just delicious. I I am excited about our guest. I don't know our guest super well. Uh, I've I've been working with him and Aze on a on a show that's happening at Old Mother on May 18. It's gonna be really cool. It's gonna be a, n- another hip hop night, and they're calling it the Rap and Blues uh, Experience with um and uh, Rap and Blues the Aze and Dejan Experience. I want to get it right, and it's another hip hop night with a full band. It's a cool thing. And Colin, you played drums that night, and that was a time, and it was a great show. And <laughs> I am glad that you're not playing this one because that like almost killed you, literally. Yeah, although I would have, I would have liked to play it. That that was one of the funnest nights ever. I really enjoyed that show. I don't know if you did, Chris. I I don't quite remember your response. I think you said everything sucked and it would have been better with a different drummer. But that um, does not sound like me. <laughs> but uh, no, that was that was a lot of fun. And this this show is going to be very good. It's going like yeah. you you cannot get better than the live hip hop experience. No, and and it's it's. It's just a different vibe. Like, so somebody said, I think it was Kiki from Out Forty and the Weekly with Kiki, brought to you by uh, the, the the Could Be Better Podcast Network. But um, we, she told me, Chris, like seeing hip hop in a club experience and not like a like a nightclub or something where it's like, hey, there's like heavy shows. It it just has a, it has a different vibe to it than like a a, a six eleven or like a Nola. And so, um. She's like, this was awesome. And she goes, uh, after Stitch play, she goes, that's the best I've ever seen Stitch. And I've seen Stitch a ton. And I was like, well, I saw Stitch <laughs> at Frederick Food Truck Fest. And he oh. was incredible. So uh, Drink, seeing, everybody drink. Food Truck I Fest know, reference. I know, drink. I know. Um, and uh, anyway, I, I, I we'll, maybe maybe we get into it with Deshaun. We'll, we'll find out. We're recording this intro post pre, 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 pre interview. So I think Deshaun might have played um, Food Truck Fest too. Oh, that's maybe you know. I could be wrong. Did he play in the bouncy house that happened to fly <laughs> away? It's it's why it flew away because he was so good. 
what was the the rock the rock band on that was it you and demood uh blue heaven was the other band oh that's all, right. all, that's all three right. of us yeah. yeah it was it was it was fun times um have you what have you started to watch love is blind yet <laughs> i uh so it's funny our our they could be a better art director uh uh, Brody Barber and I were talking today, actually. And he, and Does he, he goes, watch it? So he goes, you realize like Colin and Paige have to start a podcast now talking about trash TV. I was like, I mean, yeah. <laughs> and, I, and, I, and here's what I said. Uh, he's like, he, um, he, he said the, the way that it was described, not by you, <laughs> was not super good. And I was like, that's interesting. And what's funny is I go, I couldn't wait to get out of that conversation. <laughs> and so I I just I have a hard time with 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 reality TV show um ever. The only reality TV show I could get into was Jury Duty, and that was last year. Did we so the de- as we were the Daphne Edmund episode was when we really dug into this and she was uh she was into it. I can't remember if we tried to explain to you the premise of the show. Do you remember that? You did, and the feedback that I got was, it was it was a description. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I'm sure my vocals were were cutting out anyway, so I don't even really remember what non-existent. Was said. So hey, Daphne, have a. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was like this was this was and it, it was it was a time, but it's better now. Everything's better. Uh, could always be better though. Could always be better. Um. So I, I'm excited to talk to Dejan. Uh, they they have a whole lot of different uh, ideas. Excuse me um, about uh, music. Uh, talking about the show has been fun. Um, he's he he hustles. I love talking to him and Aze as we were working through all the things about again this awesome show that's at Old Mother Brewing Company on May 18. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be there though. That's the thing. It's my, oh, my... I thought, I thought you would sound for that. No, no, no. May 18th is a special day. It's my, uh, it's my wedding anniversary. Oh, but you've been married for so long. You don't even need to celebrate. Oh, I mean, I mean, <laughs> what is uh, 11? Was bad. 11 is the most irrelevant anniversary. Somebody can have it. By the way, when I called you earlier, were you with Laura? I thought I heard Laura. Yeah, Laura's there. Wes was there. Um, we were uh, running, running some errands. We had a, we had a, had a. Du- <laughs> You'll get to experience this much sooner. And for people that are just tuning in, that are wanting to hear about uh, dom- domesticated dad stuff, yeah, you have a lot of doctor's appointments you go to, and for uh, Wes specifically, when he got, uh, when he was in the ER pretty often for breathing issues, we had to go to a pulmonologist, and so we got to visit him today. And it was really cool because he goes, "Hey, man, everything looks really good." And so I think you don't have to come back here every six months. How about you just come back as needed? I was like, "That sounds awesome." So and cheaper, and I mean insurance, right? I paid fifteen dollars. Oh, no, that's that's fair. I uh, I do believe on the docket tomorrow is a is a tour of a pediatrician. So. It's- a pediat oh yeah, yeah yeah i mean you get a uh, uh so at frederick health they, they once you have said baby there's a uh i guess a place that said hey we want to give you money and we'll we'll um talk to all of the new parents right and so essentially they left the flyer and we went to another place by accident didn't like it went to the other one and it's awesome and so we we like the ped center here in frederick big fans they- uh, this 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 occurred during the 18 straight hour pregnancy class uh where they said we will have a pediatrician on hand that does not have to be your pre- pediatrician which then meant the research commenced and we have to go see this guy and that guy and this mm-hmm. woman and that and, and i just you know what was it like i don't know 50 years ago when everybody was smoking crack and snorting cocaine and drinking all the time when they were pregnant, I, or is that just my mom? <laughs> Shout out to uh, what's your mom's first name? <laughs> Monica. <laughs> Shout out to Monica. Um, listen, every, everything turned out okay, and mm. uh, <laughs> did it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's here on the it's here on the record. Um, I'm 40 now. <laughs> I you made it. Welcome. Welcome, dude. I'm 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 like I'm seven years behind you. How crazy is that? Man, you have anyway, the looks for it. I love not only having looks, but I like looking 
And what I like looking for is good music by good people. And I had Stajan. So we're going to get into this interview with him now. Um, Colin, before we go. Um, so again, we're recording this again in, in the past for the future. I, I want to say you should have, I don't know. We'll, 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 we'll save something special for, for when the special time happens. I'm, I'm ecstatic. <laughs> I can't, I can't wait. I think we need to get like, maybe could be better onesies made. We'll find something. I just would just be the best thing ever. Yes, we, we should. I have a story about onesies, but I'll save that. They're so expensive and then you use them for a little bit and then you just get tons of poop on them. So they're not a great investment, but what is a great investment is a free show again, May 18 old mother bring company, yada, yada, yada. It's gonna be awesome. Aze Dejan. And here is a word from our sponsor. Are you in a band in need of merch to hustle or entice your fans who won't buy your latest album? How about a business simply looking to spread the word about your brand that you want to be the next goopy lifestyle movement? Special Tees in Frederick is the place for you. Supporting local artists, businesses, and really everything else in between, Special Tees is the premier printing shop for anyone trying to expand their presence through pretty much everything that can be worn. And yes, even that. Be it embroidery, apparel, or promo products, special tees make sure your designs stand above the rest, sort of like The Undertaker versus Yokozuna at WrestleMania 9. Tell them could be better sent you and get 10% off your first order today. To learn more, visit them online at www.special-tees.com. That is www.special-tees.com. We are here. We are here with Dijon, man. I've heard so much about you. We didn't even get into the we we taped the intro before we hopped on. It doesn't always happen like that. Sometimes it's after, so we can talk about how the interview went. So this interview could be terrible, and we didn't get a <laughs> chance to say that. But I have heard so much about you. I have never met you. Uh, I know a lot of people who love you, who have recommended me to you, who have said that this guy is the guy. So my first question is, what's it feel like to be the guy? Man, that's a, uh, honestly, it's an honor to be asked that question. First and foremost. <laughs> Not um, on this podcast, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, but honestly, man, is I'm super grateful and blessed to have people speak of me so highly in rooms when I'm not there. You know what I mean? Like. I think that's ultimately what we all strive for is to have that type of um, uh, reputation with the people and anything that we do. So to have that type of um, recognition and that type of love and receive it on a daily basis, I'm truly blessed and I couldn't wish for anything more. I'm I'm interested. I always like to ask this question too. Like, how did you fall in love with hip hop? Oh, so that actually is an interesting question, to be honest, because I my story is so unique to me. But I'll I'll put it like this: um, a little bit of insight into who I am. I grew up as a military brat, and um, when I was four years old, I I was born in uh, Sacramento originally, but I moved to Japan of all places. And um, I actually grew up in Japan for about six to seven years. And um, it's crazy because, like, throughout my young life as a child, I wasn't really, like, exposed to hip-hop in a crazy way other than, like, hearing it around the house with my um, pops. But my pops actually was a rapper um, before he went into the military. And even while he was in the military for a little bit, and um, not to like go, go into his story or anything, but he actually rapped um, with an engineer who had a label. Um, at the time, it was the same label that Akon was associated with, super Ooh, early, wow. super, super early on in his career. And um, yeah, so I knew, like literally, to my knowledge, all I knew was that my pops was a rapper and that he had a rap career, but I didn't know anything other than that. And so, um, I remember having a, I, I, I went to an after school program after uh, school and they had a talent show and everybody like loved me already. I just naturally had like a super person, personable personality and um, humble brain. They were like, <laughs> at like six or seven, I just had one of those bold personalities that was like, 
this kid's going to do something or he's got to do something. So people were telling me, like, you should do something for the talent show. Like, you got to do something. And I was like, I don't know what to do. Like, I don't really whatever. And people were saying I should do comedy. And I was like, I don't know how to be funny. For real, this is so serious. Like, people are Tell telling- it's a joke, man. I didn't know you were a comic. I was like, I don't know, man. I'm my, Mind you, I'm seven years old. So I'm like, I don't know. But people are saying I'm so funny. I make people laugh and smile. So I was like, I don't know. But I remember my pops was a rapper. So I was like, what if I do a rap? And then in my mind, I was like, if I do a rap, though, it got to be like a real rap. Like, I can't get up there and like be funny rap. You know what I mean? Like, I want to be taken serious. So I went to my pops and I asked him and I was like, yo, like, I want to do this talent show and I want to do a rap. And then he, I remember him being like, like, oh, really? Like, so that's what you want to do? And I was like, yeah. He was like, okay. Then I was like, and I want you to write it because I'm seven. Oh, no. So I was like, I want you to write it for me. And he was like, I, he was really like, no, he's not going to do it. <laughs> he was like, okay, but if I write it, you have to do it. Like, he was like, if I write it, you you have to go through it. You have to practice it. You have to rehearse it. And then you have to get on that stage. You have to do it. And I was like, okay. Were there so, a lot of cusses? I hope there were a lot of cusses. Uh, there, were, there weren't, actually. There weren't, actually. It was super clean. It was super, like, um, after school special type do, of rap. Do so, you know any of it? Uh yeah, I think I know a little bit of it. Um, let's get it a cappella right uh, now. Let me, see, let me see. Um uh I'm D to the A to the J. I'm seven years old, but I don't play. You better get your game straight, cause you corny like a bowl of frosted flakes. I oh hit no pen like a heavyweight. I'm like Ali, man. I'm so great. The girls, they like my baby face. And when I come to school, they can't wait. I'm smooth with the flow. My rhymes make you hit the flow. Snap your fingers and move your feet. Get into the rhythm of my beat. I'm hyper like a kindergartner. You soft like cotton, but I'm way harder. Yeah, wow. This is it. Shut it. That's it. That's the end of the podcast. <laughs> like it, 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 it only gets worse from here. My goodness. Dude, That's that, not only is that good. That went way longer. I was expecting like two bars and you just kept going. I was like, okay, this is great. Yeah. And so mind, so mind you, right? That reaction you had uh <laughs> was pretty much the reaction of everybody else. Um at this talent show, it was like a super, it was like a big thing. Like I grew up on a, a military base. So the after school program I went to, like almost all the kids went there, all the military kids. So this talent show was like everybody knew about it. They rented out a movie theater and they had like a hundred something people in there. So I'm a seven year old kid walking out on a stage, just seeing nothing but packed house. And I, I'm literally, I can't make this, I can even send y'all video for this. I, uh, I stood in one spot and I did not move. <laughs> I did not move. I got to that one spot and I did not move, but I wrapped it and I finished it. And at the end, I threw up the deuces. I was like, and then everybody went crazy and I walked out the stairs and um, literally ever since that moment, I was like, I, I just want to feel that feeling like over and over and over again. So I just been kind of chasing that high since I was seven, to be honest. Please so tell me you won. Please tell me you won. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Honestly, um, this, little, this little girl actually beat me. Oh, <laughs> Yo, man. She sang, she sang some song. It was super beautiful. I'm not going to lie. Um, <laughs> She pulled on everybody's heartstrings, you know what I mean? Like, you have her contact info, she's the next podcast. We're gonna get her on. <laughs> so, no, no, actually. so how did you end up? So, okay, so you're in Japan for uh, for a few years, you're a military, yeah, yeah. you're traveling around. I feel like there's this connection because Stitch has got a similar story, Oz has got a similar story, and now this, this is the third uh rapper that we've had on that has yeah. some sort of military connection that has been essentially a world traveler and now ends up in, in Frederick. So how did you get here at Fort Detrick, I'm assuming, or, or is there other things yeah, involved? So, um, well, so actually originally my pops got a job out in, um, I believe like Reston area, like out in Virginia. And, um, he just happened to buy a house in Frederick and then he would commute and work out there. But my mom ended up getting a job at Fort Detrick. Um, when she was still in the military, she retired now. They're both retired now. But um, yeah, so they're both just like doing my mom, I think she does like her child, she has a government job, but my pops, he does like contracting and stuff. So I guess like just through really, I truly, truly feel like just through like God and the universe and everything like brought me to Frederick. And it's crazy because 
in my younger years, like I used to resist Frederick a lot. Like I really didn't like Frederick. I'm not gonna like lie to you. I like when I first got here, honestly, I think it was the change of pace. Um, I was I was used to more like of a city type of a vibe. Um, I was used to a different type of people. And so when I came here and it's a little bit more relaxed, a little bit more like it was slower back, even at this time, it's starting to pick up a little bit more nowadays, but at this time it was a lot slower. So I was a little um, resistant to it, but, um, <laughs> you know, you say I, that with a smile on your face. Would you like to elaborate? <laughs> no, nah, truly, um, yeah. just because like, I don't know. Like, I truly felt like there was no place for artistic growth at that point in my life. Like, I mean, obviously I was super young still. I was a teenager, but I just felt like, um, like I would look for spaces to be super artistic or creative around Frederick and it weren't a whole lot. And so oftentimes, even now, like kind of till I say till this year or like last year, majority of like the shows that I do have been out of Frederick. Um, a majority of like the meet and greets, the networking opportunities, all that type of stuff are usually out of Frederick. So most recently they're starting to be in Frederick, which I love. And I'm like, so, that's why I'm so excited about it. Cause it's like, I wanted to start here and I tried to start my, my fan base, my following here. And it didn't really go like that. So I started to travel out outward and that started to work. And now it's starting. So it's like, I'm coming back kind of, and um, I'm grateful for that. But yeah, I think it's really just like the, the pace. I just like a, a faster pace. I like to be able to, um, you know, move around the city kind of and I like to have access to like a pop-up um a pop-up uh venue of a fashion show or a pop-up studio whatever like I like those type of sceneries but I think Frederick is lacking that and I would love honestly to bring bring that to Frederick or somehow create something in which we have that because I think a lot of not just me but a lot of youth could um benefit from something like that for real in Frederick yeah Frederick does thing some things really well and then they do everything else really slow and so it's really hard to try to like you know people say say hey well this programming hasn't failed yet so let's just kind of continue to recycle the same thing over and over and over again and then when you want to disrupt that you want to change something you know and it's like and we all know our favorite disruptor here in frederick you know kiki and so it's like we 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 know yeah. that that you know when you come knocking it's like no everyone clutches their pearls and it's like you know okay like we understand that you're not comfortable with something but at the same time it's going to happen eventually do you want to be a part of this or not and so um the 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 hardest thing i think is just that endurance of like it's rejection after rejection after rejection until you can find a place to do it you know i i put on uh hardcore shows in church basements all through downtown and it took mm. a long time for us to find the ones that weren't crummy right it was like you know hey we want someone that could that could trust us that could uh give us the key and you know and just like hey we're gonna do a show we're gonna clean up we're gonna give you a deposit everything's gonna be fine and like the next day you're not even gonna know we were there like we want to be able to do these things and have these kind of artful expressions of any type of music and it's like some people want to risk it some people don't so it's 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 makes me feel sad knowing you kind of face that same adversity with trying to do things in frederick but then it's also kind of hopeful that now you're kind of you know you're going to come back and you're going to play at old mother with with Aze on may 18 and it's going to be different i think it's it, is this the first time you've done a show with a full band yes yeah this is my first first show with a uh, full band um, I've done a show with um drummer before, and I've also done another show with just a guitar player. But it's my first show, like full band. Um, Are you nervous? I'm super excited. I'm not gonna lie. I think I am, but not nervous. <laughs> that might even sound crazy, but not nervous for myself. I think I'm just nervous. So you're about... throwing your band under the bus. You're saying, I'm not nervous for me. I'm nervous that they're going to be terrible. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's more so about, everybody knows, it's about the like the chemistry and like, like, right. like really, really just um, reading each other and being able to find that space of where we're not like doing too much. You know what I mean? Where everybody's in their own pocket. I think especially because we're not like a band band that plays regularly and we like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Have, have you rehearsed yet? To, to make a band and then 
in these next months, we're rehearsing and we're working our asses off trying to get like produce the best possible show. So I think I'm just nervous about us getting to that point, but I I'm very confident that we will for sure. You, have you played with any of these people before? Um, the drummer is the drummer that I played with before, and um, the the guitar player, my guitar player, and my bass player, I have worked with in different spaces, like in studio spaces, but I've never performed with them before. But the drummer I have performed with before. Did, did you see, uh, were you around for the first sort of installment of this kind of show at the brewery with the uh, Demetrius? Oh, was it? I missed it, man. I think I was out of town or I was like, I was like on yeah. vacation or something. I really you, wanted to be there. You heard I was playing drums and you said, I don't want to see that. <laughs> so I don't want to see that. And I don't blame you. <laughs> It, it was awesome. And I think I, it's it's always interesting when other... So Stitch was kind of ahead of his time with having a, just a solid full band anytime he goes anywhere. And then it's yeah. also unfair to everybody else because it's like, it's his <laughs> band. These are his guys and he's known everybody for forever. And it's like, they're, they're just there. And yeah. uh, and they're and they're all nasty. Everybody's all nasty. nasty. And that's you the should've... crazy part, man. That's the crazy part. You should have seen this. They, uh, he had... So they are. I I played drums for the first two acts, and then Stitch had his band. So his drummer used my drums, okay. and it was about halfway through a set. I walked up on stage and I said, "You own those drums now. They are yours. I can never play these again. I am not worthy. You have a good night." And then yeah, I went and drank some mobile team. You own these drums. That is. <laughs> <awesome>. <laughs> Yo, that's insane. That's insane. See, so, and it's because I've always want that's that's probably probably on like my top five like music dream list of like things that I want is like a full band, like full band, like everybody just on call whenever. Pull have up. you yeah. been? Have you ever seen like let's say a Jay Z or a Nas or or, or even the Roots like a live yeah. hip hop band? somebody you look up to have you seen that in person in person Ooh, in person let me think i've seen so many people um i have seen jay-z not with live band i think he just had dj really when was that how long ago was yeah, that i saw him um at the made in america fest um oh. what year was that 2017 2017 um i think that was the last performance that he did at the meeting. I think you're right. Yeah. I think and, you're um, right. I was that. front row and I was by myself, actually. Why didn't you call me? Thanks. Um nah, so I actually so it's crazy because I got a ticket. I got two tickets. It was supposed to be me and my sister. She might my, my, my play sister, but me and my sis and um she unfortunately couldn't go for whatever reason. And so um so you I blocked my number going by myself. So I was staying in uh, well, I stayed out there, but I went to school at University of the Arts in, in Philly. Oh, it's like that in Philly, like right there in the That's heart. a great school, man. I, let's, yeah, I, mean, I know <laughs> we're messing around with this. That is a great, great school. And Amazing. I didn't even know that coming in. We do such great prep work for this podcast. But, yeah, but like, Chris just flipped me <laughs> off. We're not allowed to say that. <laughs> no, you but, didn't. Uh, it's, it's, it's an incredible <laughs> school, man. And, and it literally was like three now I'm dragging it. Maybe like five blocks away from where the festival was. Like right. I had to, I could yeah. just walk. So I just, I tried to like make friends because I had just got to school in like what, um, probably like around August. And then the show was in like September. So it was literally like a month. And like I'm just like I don't really have friends like that that are going. So I was like, I'm just gonna go by myself. Whatever. I'll just make some friends if I do. If I do, I don't. But. My part was that I pulled up like super, super early in the day. And I was like, I'm going to just stay right here. And like, I, I'm going to just, I'm going to just take the L, you know, <laughs> I tried to go to the bathroom, get my food and all that early. And then I was like, mm -hmm. I'm going to just stay right here until tonight. And I did. And I got to see him front row and it was insane. Bro. That's awesome. Cool. So sp speaking of people that are insane to see front row. So how did you get, so, so this show on May 18th at Old Mother Brewing is, it's it's rap and blues it's the Aze and dejon experience so how did you get connected with uh uh <laughs> i i love so much that i somebody told me Aze, Aze's real name and i can never remember it's shaquille right 
Shakir, yeah. yeah, Shakir, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Crazy, and- you know, I like probably learned his name like a year ago, maybe, and I've known him since I was like fifteen or something. But like, um, he just was always out to me. But so I think, <laughs> um, I honestly, it's, it was so long ago. I really don't remember how I even got the opportunity. But I got so many, um, beautiful, beautiful looks early on in my uh, career, probably around like when I was like. Or uh, I'll say like 15, 15, 16. Um, I was invited to perform at the Shut Up and Listen show that Alexandra was doing. Um, if anybody's familiar with her, she did a whole bunch of shows back early on in Frederick. Actually, a lot of dope hip hop shows that gave me a lot of light and like kind of gave me like my reps and like performing. Majority of them shows, I did go first and it was like only my people's there that pulled up or like just the performers. But like I said, like it helped me to get my performance in and kind of like learn my stage, how how I control the stage, you know what I'm saying? And um, yeah, like it just helped me get my practice in. But um, I remember at one of those shows, uh, Ozay had came up to me after I performed. He was like, bro, like you're super dope. You're talented. You're really young. And he was like, just don't quit. Like, just keep going. And and I was like, all right, bro, I appreciate it. And I remember at the time, like, I kind of looked up to majority of the older rappers in Frederick, just feeling like this is like where I'm trying to get to in a sense of um, notoriety in Frederick. So like when he kind of extended it on like that, it really, really meant a lot to me. And from that moment on, I was just always like, yo, big bro, whenever you want to lock in, da, da, da. And we actually had did, a, uh, kind of did a record before, but um, I don't think anything ever happened with it. But we ended up actually getting a record in recently on his most recent project, his comeback project. And um, it's probably like one of my favorite songs that I've heard from him. I got a lot of favorites from him. That's probably one of my favorites from him. That record at some point you mature, isn't it so good? Yo, like literally I told him, and it's so crazy because I feel like I can say confidently I was one of the first people to hear like like the actual project, like the records that was gonna be on the project. I got to hear it um before it came out in the studio, and I was just like, yo, like I don't know how, but he just finds a way to produce like a complete sonic masterpiece like sonically everything just sounded like so perfect and then the record choice and arrangement i was like bro your arrangement was like immaculate like it's it's it was it was really a dope crafted body of work um i hadn't i had very few uh critiques to be honest it was yeah really it's dope. i told him anytime it comes on i have to listen to the whole thing and i hate him for it so fire like it's so uh, fire <laughs> so, so, so I have one thing and then we're going to kind of get to a, a word from our sponsor here, but so for, for, for diehard listeners of the show, uh, we played brand new man on the show when we had Kiki on a, a long time ago. So yeah. what, what, what are you doing with music? Are you doing singles? Are you working on an album? Like what, what are, what are you cooking up and, and what can people kind of expect for, for the show? So I'm definitely uh, getting ready to drop a couple of singles, but I am working on a project. Um, I'm really working on this EP that I feel like is kind of going to be a summary of where I've been at like the past couple years. Um, I'll go ahead and drop the name, whatever, who cares? Uh, it's going to be called, <laughs> it's going to be called 10 times out of 10 love wins. And um, essentially the project is, um, based around like these five pillars of love that I've kind of created and all the songs will be reflective of that. And it and it kind of coincides with this film that I'm actually writing as well um, that we will be shooting in the fall and the winter. My goodness gracious. Y'all, y'all yeah. definitely got the first. The oh, first we got the uh, scoop. We got, My yeah, scoop. <laughs> what, real quick, what, what are the five pillars? What are the pillars? Um, so the five pillars, actually, let me... So I can get this because uh, I don't want to. You believe in them um, so much, you don't um, even know them. <laughs> it's a, I do know. That I just don't want to miss anyone because my my wording is always I butcher the wording. But um, so I I go uh, love of life, 
which is just your love of overall life of being alive, being That's great relative. Right? Your love of passion, that is the love of the pursuit of whatever your passion is in life, whatever that may be, whatever um, drives your heart. Um, love of companionship, which would be like your love from your partner, love from the people around you, your family, your loved ones. Um, love of self, that's the love that you give to yourself because you that's can't tough, forget. man. That's tough. And then you got the love of spirit, which is like, you know, something that is bigger than all of us that can be described and defined in any way that you see. But it's something that is bigger than all of us, something that um, is intangible, something that we connect to on a metaphysical level. You feel me? So you got the love of life, love of passion, love of companionship, love of self and love of spirit and all of the records will be centered around those five pillars. And then the film will be written based around those five pillars as well. I love that. Are you going to star in it? Um, I, I thought that was me. I will I be thought... in it. I will be in it. I, I'm, I don't know if I want to have the starring role just because um, I just feel like it's not necessarily like about me. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to, I don't want it to, I don't want people to get so wrapped up in in it being like about my real life. It's more so just gonna be a story that is depicting these five pillars and showing how, at the end of the day, love wins, which is the whole theme of my project. So like, um, I'm gonna be in it for sure. But we'll <laughs> that, that. that quickly okay. came around. That went from I, I don't know to yeah, I'm starting. I'm, gonna, I'm definitely gonna be in it, but I don't know. You know, I could I could just be I could be like. You know, an extra. I could be someone. I could be in. You know, who knows? But I'll be in this. Picture. I love that. Love wins. All right. Anyone else? I love and that wins. Uh, this dope ad from the Let There Be Rock School. So you say you want to be a rock and roll star? It's easy. Well, kind of. Just visit the Frederick Let There Be Rock School in Frederick, Maryland, to get your superstar dreams off the ground with your first lesson free. If you tell them, could be better sent you. That's right. Free. F R E. D-E-R-I-C-K. In addition to offering lessons on everything from voice to guitar, Let There Be Rock School in Frederick also provides students with opportunities to perform live and on a stage in front of a crowd as part of the school's showcase of events, including at Old Mother Brewing Company. To learn more about the school and all the things that they have to offer, visit www.frederickrockschool.com. And again, if you tell them could be better sent you, you'll get your first lesson free. F R E E superstardom, or at least getting better at playing take me up by Franz Fernadad is right around the corner. So we do this, this final segment uh, where the only thing off limits is music. Cause we yeah. have people on who are musicians. We do not talk about music at all. Specialties okay. does not allow us to say anything about music because they give you 10% off your first order. When you tell them that could be better <laughs> sent you because we don't talk about music in this segment. Exactly. Yeah. So my, my first question is Jay Z or Nas? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, so, uh, here's something I wanted. You're you're getting in. I I had no idea coming in that they they drew this into movies. That you're this into film, and this is just a, a complete perfect segue into all of it. Because I love uh -huh. to talk movies with anybody who wants to talk movies. So uh -huh. you lucked out. Flipping movie. I almost cussed. I had to stop myself there. Um, <laughs> so so let's talk about we'll we'll spread this out a little bit, but the last, last 12 months, what's your favorite movie that you've seen? Oh, last so much. Let me see. It's rare that I even go to the movie or watch movies. I'm it doesn't even it doesn't have to be a contemporary movie. It could be just a movie you put on Netflix or you're at home, like whatever. Just like um damn. I watch so much um like cartoons and anime and um, Spirited Away. <laughs> Yo, Spirited Away is fire. Um, <laughs> that's it. That's the that's the best anime movie of all time, is it not? Away is uh, fire. <laughs> are you uh are you a one piece guy i do like one piece i i i haven't tapped in that heavy but i do like it i I'm, i mostly was watching like my hero academia and um uh i love one punch man um i'm trying to think of some others off the top of my head 
Uh, You're a film writer uh, and you got nothing. I love. <laughs> nah, cause I really, I'm not gonna lie. Like when I like something, I'll just like watch it like over and over again, yeah. which is crazy. But like, I really do it. Like so, like I watch, um, I watch Avatar all the time for no reason, cause I've seen it like a bajillion times. But I watch it over and over again. I know I could probably, I could literally probably do lip sync. <laughs> over the time. That's how. So, I so how how do you feel about what Netflix is doing? Are you into it? Um, so <laughs> my lady actually, she put me onto it and she actually likes it. So I've been trying to tap in. I'm not all the way on board, but I'm not all the way against it either. So like, I'm not all the way there though. I really don't, I don't like certain characters. And then like, they changed a lot of stuff and they made like the story really rapid and sped it up and like, I don't know. It just didn't. I was like, this didn't. That's not how the cartoon went. So for you to kind of alter it just made me like, ah. but it's, um, it's hard because the cartoon, like I'm not a big anime guy by any means. Like I, I watched Dragon Ball Z as a kid and I watched all of those and like I came classic, the classics, right? Didn't yeah. Rip. Die? Yeah. Yeah, he did. And that was tough. Yeah, he uh, did. So, uh, so that uh, Dragon Ball Z was a big thing. And then um, for sure. I think I, anyway, but then I don't know. I, I remember watching Avatar when it came because like everyone was freaking out about it. It's like it was really good. But then what what sucks is then it's like I watched this like the live action stuff and I'm like, you guys realize like there was a live action Dragon Ball Z that wasn't good either. Like I think we just need to stop trying to do these things and just let cartoons be cartoons. Except yeah. then you get cool things like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and it's like that was a ton of fun. You know? And you get X Men and then you get all the Marvel stuff. It's like, Ugh. yeah, I'm okay, but like the first. Like the first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was kind of crazy though. Like when uh, you look at them suits and like those I, were crazy, bro. Like, <laughs> like it didn't who, age the best. I'll just put it like that. Oh, uh, like, who's who's your favorite turtle? Damn. Honestly, okay, as a kid, Michelangelo. As a kid, Michelangelo. But I grew up and like my favorite is Raphael. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a bad boy. Those are two wrong answers. Two so wrong there, answers. You look, like a, you look like a Donatello. <laughs> a Donatello. I ain't going to lie to you. He is 100% a Donny fan. I, it's, the, it's the worst. Oh, I don't know. Look, I already. See, I'm a real, I'm a real dude. You feel me? I'm a real dude. I already know. Yeah. That's it why nobody why Leonardo never gets any love. Nobody ever said Leonardo. So nah. that was to, that was totally me. Super responsible, firstborn. Okay. And so I was See? like, oh Leonardo, whatever. But like I wanted to be Raph, but I just couldn't do it. I couldn't. See, I think I'm really like, I don't know. I think I teeter totter because it's like I'm so Michelangelo, but like I really want to be Raphael so bad. Like I want to be like so like Did you ever did you ever play any of the video games? The Ninja Turtle video games? Yeah, 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 yeah. I love the video games. Honestly, the video games from, bruh, I say this all the time, like, video games from when we were younger were so much better than now. Yeah, this, this is, like, this is the problem that we can't do this in person anymore because I have the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle arcade console Oh my god. In my possession. You remember playing that? Like, yeah. the, like all that. <laughs> if you would be over right now, we'd run that. Bro. And that was like turtles in time, all that stuff. April's still looking hot. I it remember was, that. Oh, I remember man. the turtles in time. Yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. That's I so love that was probably growing up. That was probably my favorite. Like, I wasn't even on like uh spider-man and all that yeah i was like in love with like i really i have i remember i probably still got it somewhere i had a whole teenage mutant ninja turtle outfit like a jacket yes. with a turtle with a turtle shell on the back and i had yes. like a shirt and i had a hat and like some like green shoes yeah i was full like turtle it's fever. it's crazy that kids kids today <laughs> will never and this and this is this is my old man statement and i'm gonna say it and it's gonna be what it is kids today will never know what saturday morning meant to kids ever Ooh, again goodness. Because like really? like Saturday mornings used to be just like stacked. You had your X Men, the '90s stuff that was so good. You had Spider Man that was super cool. You had Batman that was super cool. You had Jackie Chan Adventures, which was super cool. You had Beast Wars. You had it's like you had everything. You had Beetle. It's like the stuff from when I was a kid as a, a Saturday morning. It was just great. They don't even. 
I don't even get it. Got like they got like weird stuff now. Like I don't even know. Like jiggly pop. It's just weird. Like what is jiggly pop? Shows and stuff. I don't know. I'm just making stuff up. But it's weird. Okay. Sound jiggly. But we could have awful. something here. Let's start the jiggly pop cartoon <laughs> under the yeah. could be better network. We'll be millionaires. Man. Honestly, though, I'm not gonna lie. I, and this is something, man. I'm just giving y'all all type of scoops. But I have been talking um to my best friend, which is crazy. We were talking about uh, University of the Arts. My best friend, um, Corey Hallam, who I went to school with, who has a um, production company called Wave Change, and he shoots all my, well, shot all my music videos, um, and we directed them together. Um, that Deep End music video that I've been posting recently, he shot that one. Um, me and him talk all the time about doing like a, a animated series. And that's like probably like one of my dreams. I want to do like a full on cartoon, like a full blown, like, like almost like a, um, trying to think of a style though. Almost like a, what was that one show called? It was like a space theme. I can't remember the name of it, bro. Um, the Jetsons. Not like the Jetsons. <laughs> The Jess is hilarious. No, it was called um it was on TBS for a short while. I can't remember the name of it. Ben but, um, 10. It was like, ooh, Ben 10. That's kind of fire. But no, nah, Ben 10 was cool. It ben just 10 was, was cool. Yeah, it was cool. I don't know. I mean, it, was, it, it, it was it was the be- yeah, I was the beginning before it started to get weird. Like there's a couple cool shows like in that time where it's like you're just like farming everything out because it is, like, yeah, because Cause it's like it's cool for a second, but then it's like, why? Like, why does it, like I don't know? Why I did know. it? Do? Why did things stay on his wrists and not yeah. grow with him? He didn't outgrow it. I don't I, know. It's just like I want to believe. Like I want to suspend my disbelief just enough, but I don't want to be like tur- turning my brain off. Like I, I don't want to do that. Yeah, yeah. Because I start overthinking sometimes when it doesn't all the way track. I start like pulling, pulling the strings, pulling out the yeah. strings, like. Mm. I don't know. It's like Captain Planet. He's our hero. He's going to take pollution down to zero. <laughs> he, he, we can't hear him to shut right now. But yeah. My favorite is still the Don Cheadle oh, Funny yeah. or Die Captain uh, Planet. That is still one of the greatest bits of, of all time. Uh all right, Dejan, we we are wrapping up here. Uh, we're 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 gonna play, speaking of Captain Planet and saving uh, everything. Can you save us from this segment? We're gonna switch into playing a song. Um, if you we we talked about it in our pre show meeting, that do you have a song? Do you want to name it? Do you just want to surprise people? Um, yeah, honestly. <laughs> Let's do let's do one of my favorites. It's literally to this day still one of my favorite songs um, that I've done. I was gonna do somebody else, but you know it's about me. So um, <laughs> let's do this song. It's called Garden, and um, it really took a lot for me to get to the place to be that vulnerable to make a song like that. But um, I love it, and yeah, it's like one of my babies. This is it. This is Dejan baby. It's called uh, Garden Gardens. Garden. Garden. This is it. Dejan, it was a pleasure to meet you. Uh, we cannot wait to do more things with you in the future. Uh, everyone come out, mark your calendars for if it's if it's not already marked, May 18 at Old Mother Brewing Company here in Frederick. It's Aze and Dejan experience with a full band. Uh, it's gonna be insane. Oh, and Basby's gonna be there too. It's gonna be great. Um yes, I'm here, here is Garden. Don't be mad when it's in my garden. Don't be mad when it's in my garden. Don't be mad when it's in my garden. Mad when it's in my Mad when it's in my garden. Said don't be mad. Poured into you so much, I watched you grow, gave you one and a half. Kept you so close to the sun that you started to shine, started shading out all of your past, but they never last. Neglected my garden, bitch, I beg your pardon. Do you know the task? Collecting the leaves and filling. The bags are trimming the trees and watering the grass. Oh no, not on the screen. I'm still on the man. Can't give you the seeds, can't give you the plan. Got mud on my knees, got dirt on my hands. Oh no, rolling my sleeves and rolling my pants. You leaning on me when you're taking a stand. The pain that runs deep like the roots in the land. Don't blame me. Don't blame me. Don't blame me. Don't blame me.
time I walk your way And you got me looking crazy when you're switching up the play You know good and well that you don't want no smoke with me today The Could Be Better podcast is recorded somewhere with suspect Wi-Fi in the United States of America. We've been without a studio for several decades, but have finally, finally moved to the real estate where the talks tick in the West's yay. What? Actually, we're, we're live now, now, but you're listening later. So please follow us on Instagram, Facebook, <sighs> Threads, and Blue Sky. And don't forget to check out our website for literally everything else at www could be better meh.com also pretty 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 please leave us a review on apple podcasts overcast spotify or wherever you listen to podcasts or don't and then let us continue believing what we're doing has purpose and meaning and you like us and plus don't forget to check out all of our other podcasts exclusively within the could be better podcast network which includes just us for right now as the other pods be sleeping Hey, shout to Kiki, shout to Stitch, shout to my magnum opus-ish. And hell, if all else fails, check out Smartless, because we were friends with Jason, Will, and Sean. Wait, we know those guys? Of course. <laughs> we welcome to Arrested Development. I'm Colin McGuire. And I'm Chris Perry. Thanks for listening, and don't forget, this always could be better.